Okay, welcome. Here we have a doubles match from sunny Florida. Uh, we got Nano Cabrera and Les Bloom against Jeff Lester and Karen Davis. It looks like Nano and Les already started here with a 3 2. <clears throat> and now Karen rolls and a 3 1. Easy there, make the five. They've won fist bumps. Let's have a fun match. Yeah, five something here. The glare is a little strong. I cannot see exactly what it is. Okay, it must be a five one. Yeah, five one. A little bit of a confusion, but if it's a five one, I do not see where they played the one. <clears throat> okay, they moved up from the three before. Yeah, a little confusion. I guess this uh these kind of confusion started discussing where the checker is, but the checker was on the 21. Okay, so early legal play, 5-1, down and split. I mean, down and flex, I guess, 6-5. to five. I think it would have split the back there. <clears throat> and 6-2 will go outside and make the make the outside point. Good play. 6-5 will run. We got a very advanced anchor game here. 3-1, making the 5. It's turning into a race-type game here. One checker trapped back. 5-1. In slot, that seems like a reasonable play. I like it. Yeah, I'm not sure I like the slot right now as much than the diversity of having the builder. Because if I want to run, there's going to be some immediate hitting. But I think they're actually pretty close or about the same. Okay, 4-3. Okay, yeah, 4 down and 3, I'd bring spare to the 8. You still need spares on the 8 there. Good play, and that's what they're doing. Hit the clock. Everyone's trying to build structure, and there's the 2-1. So it pays off, and now they slot, so they're building a nice little board there. I call it a nice little Airbnb waiting for them to come visit. And 6-4. Make the two. Making the two is the play that does not leave a blot. There they are, moving with two hands. 3-1. Well, just step up with the three and make the prime. is reasonable. So Black's looking to attack. Double sixes, they don't need to attack. Is that double sixes or six three? Double sixes, I don't think they need to attack. Now they just run. There it is. Boom and boom. Point on head. And this looks like this is going to be double pass. Two five dance. Actually, this might be uh, too good here. Yeah, you can kind of free roll. There's nothing here where white can get back into the game on one roll. Uh huh. So yeah, it has to be too good. Easy, easy drop here. Nothing much to consider for white. In that situation, I think it's technically too good because there's nothing that, there's no role that black can really get back into the game uh, by by rolling there. Um, you know, black rolls, they're not going to leave a shot. Even if white comes in with one checker, then there's a pass. So they're kind of a free roll. But okay, one nothing. The game two, two one, down in slot. Three one, hit. <coughs> yeah, three one is a hit. Double ones, you can make both points. Two one slot, double ones, you can make both points. With three one, you hit. 4-1, comes in and hits as well. Okay, 5-4 will make it. Looks reasonable. 
I like making it. You're way ahead. You could hit again, but I like the play of just anchoring off them. You know, it's already four checkers back to two, so you're in a very powerful position. Although 5-1, boom, they make that advanced anchor, which they love, making that 20-point. And now it's going to be a long game. So it's going to be a mutual holding game. Karen and Jeff are further behind, but since both of them have the five point, it's um, both have the golden point. It's going to be, be a while. It's going to be a long game. Not a lot of volatility here. That's a good roll, making the outside point, blocks the sixes. Five coming down is reasonable. Also reasonable out of the slot, eight to three. Normally, you do not want to make points behind the anchor, but uh, I've found that the four point, making the four point behind the anchor is always right. And the three, if you don't have a first point yet, is also good if you haven't had a first point. I don't like that stripped mid so early, especially since white is behind. But white really wants to get the checkers on the ace point moving here. Get a move in, it gets in some timing, and there it is. Repopulate the mid. Ooh, the hit. Uh, not a big fan of the hit. I would keep the mutual holding game and keep running. I wouldn't want to get caught in an ace point game here. Um, okay, 2 6. This is awkward. So just another checker down. So I can double hit, and now I have a chance to catch up in the race. So breaking that front anchor worked. Which I, I would think of uh, a kind of like the longevity of keeping it. Oh, there's the three six, and there it is. It hits. But what about the three? Keep it going. Yeah. Okay. That would that play works. Hit the clock. Ooh, double six dance dancing on one point board. Never fun. I don't look at that. I'm gonna try to. Do a maneuver here and switch my player off the board. Boom. Now when I look, I'll probably be looking more at you guys. So I'm going to fix this here. Oh. Make this screen big. Oh, I'm doing this while they have a pause themselves. Karen... Directing the tournament, writing down the scores there. When they're waiting, they pause the clock. Karen's up, rolling again. They're not rolling. They were distracted on who was supposed to roll, and I was distracted on who was supposed to roll, so I don't even know. I guess I could run in there and tell them if it wasn't a different part of the country and a different day. I'm not seeing this live. I am seeing it after the fact, so I'm kind of playing with that, saying that I could run and tell them. It's kind of a joke. Um, okay. Whack on the ace point for timing. Double four dance. That was ugly. But Block decides not to double since they have four checkers back. They want to advance their position. 6-2 is interesting. I guess I would go ahead and whack 13-5. I mean, that's what you were doing before. Still behind the race. If you want to build something, you want to build that five point. And if not, you can just start building that kind of multiple anchor back game. So it looks like they're on the same page. Whack up the five. Again, they're happy to sacrifice that check on the ace point. They don't care about that. Ooh, another dance. And this is just bad luck for them. I would just cube this. Um, okay, I guess it's too good. Well, now it is too good. Hit the outside checker. One, hit the outside check. Two, three. And then you hit. Yeah, hit that last checker. That's going to be three on the roof. And now it's going to be too good. That's it. That's four. Here, Karen's run, hoping for an ace. Oh, no. It's 
So this is also just probably too good. This is just too good. Three on the roof, always too good. Six two, not wonderful. I kind of want to extricate one of those back checkers there. At least with the two, you have to step up with the two. You could come in with the six and step up. You have covers. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. At least jumping out. Karen does come in with the two. Now they're looking to hit off that point again and, and cover. Would love to do that. They do not. And go all go all out. What could happen? Hit. You could have hit with the two and jumped out with the four. Leave blots all over the place, but when you're blitzing, you can play with lots of blots sometimes when it's so good. You're giving them some super jokers, but you just kind of play fluidly and go for it. And what's that? A three something. Looks like three and something they don't like, or they would have jumped out first. Oh, yeah, three one. So again, there is possibilities. There's lots of ways to get stuck back there. Or three dance again. They pretty much have a free roll here, though, too. I mean, little numbers can still play inside. You can still have a five point board. You get them like a three two, you make the two point. You know, two one, you can play. Five three just jumps out, although that way you don't have a three. You're going to have to run from the back here as so you run in the mid. And again, see, you start seeing how back checkers can get stuck very easily. Or one does not come in. So they're desperately looking here for a four or five. Karen scoring again. Prepping the cube, putting it back to zero. Karen's writing down that somebody else won, moving them along in the bracket. Oh, I don't think it was Karen's roll. Karen already rolled. She rolls again. Now she comes in. Oh, and then they say, oh. Okay, so he's waiting for Nano. Nano had walked away because he was also busy, so they're, they're, they're playing doubles. I guess Nano's doing something else. They pause the clock. Generally, doubles, if one person walks away, the clock's still running. Um, maybe because he's the director or something, but Turn off two people are playing doubles, you keep the clock keeps running. Someone doesn't have to be there all the time necessarily. Um, but it's courteous if he is running the tournament, uh, you know, to pause and wait. But Karen got to roll again and she came in the second time. So they had a I mean that's great for Karen. Slot, uh, hopefully kind of make that anchor. Yeah, if she can make the anchor before they get out, uh, she can take this. It'd no longer be too good. She might be able to take. But I think this roll, if they don't get a, a four or five or come in. Oh, and now they double. Okay, easy pass. So no one's taking this. So it worked. Karen rolling twice. Uh, I guess them coming in with one. With Karen coming in with one, uh, led them to the cube. Um, and that's about focus and distraction in games. I mean, that happens to everybody. It's hard um, to keep focus. And, you know, they rolled twice. There's a lot going on. Directors doing their things, scoring, scoring matches and stuff like that. Um, okay, resetting the board, 2-0. Two ways, seven away. Nice, sweet little early lead here. 
Wait. Didn't they just score it? Maybe I'm missing something. That was the second game? Okay. Three zero. Maybe I missed something. Looks like they scored it twice. Um wasn't a gammon. It was a double pass. Um Okay, five one four three. Three one great roll for Karen. Now three zero, they're gonna be a little, you know, they're notching it up for sure. They're gonna be doubling a lot faster here. A lot more aggressive with the cube. Down three zero in a match to seven. It's like two notches down. There's that lift, five three. Let's make a point. I mean, the cube, believe it or not, was already close there. It was already close. If they don't anchor, I'm doubling. Ooh, they got a key anchor. Oh, they don't have anything pretty to play. Yeah, so you're going to make the five. For sure. Of course, that's pretty. That is pretty. There's something pretty to play. You just can't anchor and make a point. But making the five, I think, is definitely, definitely the correct play here. Oh, okay, good. They don't have to score. Good, because you noticed that. Okay. Yeah, she says last game you got one. Correctly noticed it's only one point. That's good. That's a relief. The point of the correct score. So White will still be more aggressive here, just not quite as aggressive if they were down 3-0. Uh, Or three, boom, the double hit. There is nine in the zone, but that five point, if they're hit back, Black still has lots of game if they're hit back. If, they're, if they don't, uh, you could see an early double here popping up. Two one does hit, comes in with both and hits. Great roll. Two one, they both come in. Hit. Not a lot of rolls coming with both. That was a great, great roll there. Six four comes in a wax. A hit here will really even the game. A dance. Up. Probably early to double because there's only eight now in the zone. Three checkers back. But it's close. If it was 4-0, I think this would be a cube. I think it's correct to wait here. And I'd probably bring come down the three and step up an anchor. I like this. Kind of gives you a little bit on both sides. You know, you're not really committed to the blitz for sure yet. And there's the 2-6. Two 2-6 six. Two six hits. So at least White here has that, you know, back anchor to battle from here. And they have spares. You know, they have good good distribution if they can come in and play. I probably would have jumped from the back, but this is not bad. Might very well be right. Well, this does have the connectivity, I guess, for Black. They can get fives and make the anchor. Here it comes in with the one. I mean, the two. And I would just... Oh, it's two... Oh, it's double twos. I thought two one. Okay. Yeah, double twos comes in and hits. Perfect play. Double three dance. Boom. No, it's looking better. I think they're gonna roll. You got seven. You got nine in the zone. We have four checkers back. No, I wouldn't stop. If anything, I step up the other one. I don't want three checkers on the same point. It's probably not bad, but I just... In all these situations, I just like the diversity of checkers to have them in different places. Another dance, and throw the cube. I think there's a reason to take here. And they pass. I would have thought about it a little longer, but... Um, it didn't seem that bad. They still had a lot... Uh, Karen and... 
She has still a lot of checkers back. Um, a lot of gameplay there. And I didn't get the pip count. I mean, you at least you at least want to wait. You have time, especially in doubles. One person can count one color, one can count the other. And check the race. Maybe that influences if you're taking or passing when you're looking at the race. Okay, there it is. 4-1, down and split. Yeah, that's a good option. 2-1. Well, a six, it was a 6-5 first, then a 4-1. So if 6-5, then 4-1, I would have slotted um, for sure. With the four one. So 2-1, they just popped down. This is completely reasonable play. I think it's right. 6-1, doesn't hit, so it's going to make the bar. White looking to pop out, does not pop out. White makes the bar, so everyone has little you know, giraffe positions there, you have giraffes on each side. Well, one of them's tails separate a little bit, but it's definitely the giraffe position on Nando and Les's side. Four, two. Okay, make the little mini prime. Yeah, make the mini prime and step up. Step up from the front, give them the sixes, or step up from the back. Often I step up from the back, and sometimes it's just kind of like a cute play. Um, I just want to get attacked a little less. And yeah, this is right. Down and then hit. Three one will hit right back. Yeah, it's very similar. Both positions have two checkers back. Through one six is not great, but we'll give a nice diversified builder, although it strips them in. Now both have strip midpoints. Black is at least split back there. And we have a five something. So the five's out. Five six. Yeah, good roll. Runs. Five one is not a good number. Now that giraffe is expanded out there. It looks more like a brontosaurus now on Nano and Les's side. Oh, it's a 4-1, not a 5-1. Okay, they step up with both. That's reasonable. And are they thinking about a, a cube? You could think of a cube. 3 one's a great number. On stack. That's the one you wanted. Karen's hoping for a 6 here. 6 is the number they want. 1-6, 2-6, 3-6, 4 5-1 is no good. It's hit on the ace. Boom. Timing hit. It's an action play. A double taking this big time. Easy take. Um, just an action play. Black does have lots of threats. So threatening the five prime there. Um, okay, Karen gives it up. Maybe I'm a taker. I'm not the only one. But, uh, hmm. Have to look at that one. It's a fast pass. I don't know if I'm passing that from the bar necessarily. Uh, I think there's still a lot of a lot of play left there. Hit three one. Okay, hang on, I gotta get them started here. Four away, six away. So six is seven. So what's that? Sixty two thirty eight is the match equity between them. 62% chance of winning the match for Nano and Less. 38% for... No, 62, no. Sorry. 64-36. The Neil number for 6 is 7. And that would mean since it's 2 points difference, each one is worth 7, so it goes from 50 to 64. And then the other person is 36, because the match equity is always add up to 100 makes it kind of easy to do. Each person is kind of memorized one side, and then you know the other side of the numbers. And fun. Okay. We had a 3-1-6-3, three, three, now a 4-3. Not easy. Now, for these early 4-3s, sometimes you just got to do... Um, I do what I normally do. I kind of do an up and down. I play on both sides. It always dupes one of the numbers um, one way or another. 
If you get hit, at least you have something. You still have play. But, you know, they do the two-up. May not be bad. I don't I do not do that play enough. Sometimes I, there's a marginal error I make uh, for not coming up. But it, I don't use it that much. Oh, 6-5 dance. Bad roll. You don't like dancing on two-point boards. 3-1. It's, it's not good. So I just come down with a three and... Probably eight to seven, right? Yeah, eight to seven, and then just come down. So the checker on the eight's a lot safer than the checker on the seven because you don't have the one, one six, two six, three six, four six. And there's a dance. Now I just cube this. They're frustrated. They may very well pass again. They may pass. You don't know. I you I definitely cube positions like that all the time. Two. That is a play, but making the four looks stronger here because you're making that prime. Not solid. See, four away, one six, they're going to have to come down. This is still better than what I call plastic in the ocean. Eight to two would be a bad play. Lots of people do that to play safe, quote unquote. Uh, but dumping eight to two behind the anchor is just junk. That's why I call it plastic in the ocean. Just don't throw plastic into the ocean. Don't do it. Um, they did not double. They move a two six. They roll. Definitely would have doubled that position. I don't know if it's too good. I would not have slotted the back of that prime. Not a lot of reason to slot the back of a four prime there because they're approaching a very efficient cube, I believe, anyway. So there was risk. 6-5 closes the bar point. That was a good roll. I still think it's a double here. Um, look, then they got a lousy number. What do you do? Run out. I wouldn't do that. I'd run. Yeah. Head in the race, I'd run. Okay. Maybe they're afraid to run. That's fine. Maybe running's wrong. Four three is not good. They cover the ace though. So again, this is some you know, there's lots of good numbers here. Now I think it's a take. It's still double. Um now you just gotta go to the four. You know, continue that same game plan, I guess. You don't want to leave a blot in the outfield and run off the anchor. So I'd get more builders there. I would run. I would leave it. Now I'd leave behind the floor prime. Just give himself more numbers to make points. Um, and 2-1. Now they can try to sneak away. Step up with both. Both checkers see the light there if you step up. It's scary with someone in the zone, but you, you're just going to get hemmed in. Yeah, step up with both. It's an action play, especially if you've seen that black has not been doubling. So you don't have that much to be afraid of. You know, if they get if they get the nuts here and point on your head, you know, you're gonna have an easy pass. So it's not that scary. Um, you know, sometimes when you play players, sometimes you don't realize if you know they're hesitant to cube, you can make this risky play that you're not sure of if you're playing someone else. You might get it wrong and play safe, but it's already been doubled. But now look, now they're stuck. Then. Maybe they double now, but again, they st they, they still don't. Huh? Thank you. And there's the double one. So now I guess they're happy they did not step up. They would have been switched on there. And they just would have been doubled out if they dance. Well, I don't know what they're doing here. They're one, two, three, four. Four. Yeah, I didn't see the reason to slot and give him a free roll here. It's kind of a free hitting number. I don't see the reason to slot that. Five one, that's reasonable. Come down, keep the four prime. Maybe they don't get over it. And they don't. Four two. Yeah, well, four two, do it, and then you go six to four. Back to the way you wanted it. Again, I thought that slot in front with the double ones was too risky and not needed. 3-2 comes down. Again, I think this is a massive double. I think it's a pass. Um, I don't like it at all. 3-2. Makes the full prime here. And now they'll find the cube. 
with double ones, they will still be scared. Maybe they're playing for too good. I don't know. Not very well, maybe too good. That's a play. The problem with these situations is you don't have timing to maintain it. So you're hitting them and they can dance. And if they dance, you can't escape your back checkers and you have to move. And if they come in, you have to move. There's a 2-6. That's good result. That's eating a lot of pips for black here. But white has to play. So white's going to lose his prime. I guess they want to get something small, but it's still not going to cover. So 4-1. Make the inside point and hope they don't get a say. Oh, you can lift. Yeah, this is the right play. What was I thinking? Don't leave a shot. That's right. It's still only one way out, so I do the other play. No reason to leave the shot. Yeah, lift. Still only one way out. I would just double this. Maybe you think it's too good still. Now white looking for a nice little small number here that they don't have to break their broken five prime. Something like a two one or even a three two or a four one. Six five is really lousy. And now it's it, it is just a free roll here for black to play on. Easy play on now. Technical play on. Not a lot of bad rolls. Two four would hit and would break kind of the prime, but then they'd be on the move. Six three is no good. Yeah, I don't know if I would have done that or the outside. Because it still leaves them, the 2 4 would still leave them a hit and a bust. I don't know what's best. Oh, are we doing something? I guess they had double twos. And... Okay, 4 2. Five three comes in, so this is a play as I call. These are just, just technically it's too good. There's no reason. Um, there's no roles that white can get back into the game and give up those a take. So black can keep playing on. Oh, for too good in these situations, and they're just hoping for white to keep busting the board. So then if black does leave a shot, uh, they get busted. A lot of people ask about trap plays. Oh, so when will you trap? We well, want them to bust their board first before you know before you do any kind of trap for sure um, you don't want to get caught on the bar it's fair to say you're always going to trap and leave a shot if they have a two-point board and a block you're often going to do it with a three-point board um especially with a three-point board with a block um and i'm talking three-point board busted they don't really have a chance to redo it four-point board you're going to be really hesitant and probably wait um great roll for white not to bust now black's kind of worried. Should we roll? Should we double? It is still probably technically too good. A little too scared. Sure, there was some numbers that weren't good there. Um, you know, 6-5, six, 6-4, six, 6-3. Six, um, leave shots. So that's six numbers, but then they have to be hit. So it's, a, it's not enough. I think you win more gambits than that. Than, um, and immediate turnarounds. So the formula there for immediate turnarounds, you see how many numbers completely turn it around. So we can say if three numbers left, so it's six numbers that leave a shot, they still have to hit it. Um, so that turns into uh, six times 11, 66, around 5% chance of being hit. Um, but are they going to win 10% gamins in that position? And most definitely they are. So the immediate turnarounds, if they're still going to win more gammons and they're going to be hit, uh, you should just play on still. Okay, a quick 4-2, four, 4-3 four, slot. I mean, 4-3 split. Classic split right into the hole there. I call out that the glove formation. It looks like a little baseball glove for me. And you like putting the, kind of the ball into it. And look at this. Ooh, they land it. They close the glove. And this is dangerous. And this is just... Well, three-way, many-way, okay, this is the one square. Maybe you don't have the cube yet. 
and kind of any of these other scores um, you'd cube if it wasn't three away or two away. If it was three one, I'd cube that. People do not like taking when they're on the bar against four, five, six with spares. And one six it jumps out. I mean, no, we'll hit now. Will not jump out. We'll hit. Three away, six away. I think I just, I just double this anyway. Yeah, dupe the twos. Jump out. Dupe the twos. Got a six. No, not that one. Not the, yeah, that's six. Jump out. They have two to make the four point. They got twos to hit you. And if there's no hit or a cover here, and that's a cover, that's making the four point. That's good. Comes down. And any other score, I'd still I'd be cubing this. If this score, I was waiting for them to make that. Six fives can run, or you can just make the four. Or you can make the eight heavy. I would not run. Whoa, both, both touching the checkers there. Generally speaking, the other players shouldn't touch the checkers. You just tell them to put it back. I wouldn't do that six. That's six. That's that's a reasonable play here. And then bring another one down. This is this is perfectly reasonable. You don't want to get hit with the other checker. Um, I'll do that or making the three point. Six one. Great roll. This is off the cube. So black really trying to prime here. Looking for one of those nice little priming numbers. Five one is not one of those priming numbers. So what do you do here? Eight to three, most likely, to keep the spare on the mid. You still want to spare in the mid in this territory because if white jumps out, you don't want to have to break your midpoint to hit. Soon enough, it came up. People learn rules of thumb and say, oh, keep a checker on the mid, but then it's always a hard time to know well, you can't keep a checker on the mid forever. It does come a time when you break it. Um, okay, four two, they bring two down. They did not want to risk having another blot out there. Four three hits, so this is a great roll. And now if this is a dance, it's back to too good. And now it's too good again. Even though it's three away, you just swept on past the market. Nothing that white can roll. There's no sequence that I see that white can come back and get a take. This is another clear too good in my opinion. Let's say race wise, you know, black can safety that outfield blot, and even if white gets a really good number like a three two and anchors out, they can't take that position. Uh, so there's another two good there. Um, jumps to five one. Two away, six away. Two away, six away is twenty percent match winning chances for the trailer. Um nineteen point nine or something like that. Uh But I rounded up and uh, I can't tell one tenth of one percent, but it's right around 20. Okay, a classic split and another 5-4. And you just do the same thing. Mirror 5-4s there. Look at that. Beautiful stack position. First person to roll a nice pair. Pointing numbers wins. 6-4. Yeah, make that anchor. Love it. And what do you do? going to dump. Oh, he's thinking about running, but running still leaves a shot. Thinking about making the two. Well, I'd make I'd make the anchor. I'd make the five. I'm gonna make the five and come down. Just battle from there, especially since I'm leading. Oh, and they jump and they say, okay, we'll make the outside anchor then if you don't make it. Yeah. We could play now. Black really wants the anchor again. And two one, they don't get it. The golden point is the golden point. It's the best point. On the board, the golden point is your opponent's 20 point. I mean, your opponent's five point is the golden point. Your 20 point. Um, I believe that was dubbed by Paul McGrill back in the day. If not, it was just dubbed in the 70s. But I'm pretty sure it was McGrill that first called it the golden point. Um, 
especially if you're leading here, if you're leading 5-1, I just kind of get that advanced anchor and then forget about it. You're not really worrying too much about the other things. Again, there was some little distraction there, and then they picked up the dice and said, oh, we haven't moved yet. Let's slot the five. That's one and one. Okay, two and one. And wouldn't they love to have an advanced anchor here? Five one will hit. Hit twice. No, hit twice. Yeah, no, no. Uh, that was boom, boom, double tiger. That was a double tiger play for sure, especially if they have a blot there on the five point. Where's that checker? It's on the two point. Their checker, they're trying to have it in the middle. Looks like it's on the one and a half point. That looks like. Yeah. Hopefully they'll remember that it's in the right place. Comes in on the five. And probably just safety. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's not doing much there. Well, this is good at this point. Oh, two. Yeah, make the anchor. That was the right point, right? That was the one we said. They'd come in with the two, so it was right. Six will jot right on out. Good thinking. Is that what we want to do? Yes. Oh, they double. And they insta take. Does very much look like a take. This is not scary at all because there's no blots floating around. Um, it's not that scary. And, oh man, they double and they immediately get double sixes, which is basically a recommendably forced play. Recommendably forced because, of course, they could have played two to the ace and left a blot, but they weren't going to do that. The safety, I don't think I would have worried about safety in there. I just back it up. Nah. You have to split the back. I'd slot and split the back and they have a block. You know, once you make the 23 point, I say once you make it, you got to break it. It's not a point you really want to keep. It's not, you know, that clear. You know, the race isn't that clear. You got good contact in the outfield. You do want to make your board as fast as possible. What's this, a 3-1? Yeah, just make the four point. White's oh, really hoping to make another point inside. They do not, and they cannot run. The six has to go to the A's. Ugly, ugly. Look at that. Okay, a two here is a game changer. And if not, you just pop out. You need to get out. Six something, what? Six what? Six three? Oh, six two. That's great. Hit and pop right on out. Great roll. Three six and six will who can hit. Yeah. But man, it's so ugly with that check on the ace. I guess you're kind of forced to do this. I don't know. Triple shot. I'd probably hit. I probably would hit on the deuce, but maybe it's overly aggressive. But you know, you were losing. Gamuts don't matter. Yeah, but still, losing gamma does not matter for white. It's the same as losing a game. Okay, double twos. They move two right away. Up with one. Safety. I guess so. Nothing about not a lot to do. Five two. Oh. What? Oh, five four. Okay. Okay, there's a 5 2. Oh, they're going to be scared. No, they're going to end up coming in on the 2 and bring the 5 down. So, White's here looking for a 2 themselves and something that will jump out. 6 1 is just ugly. Those 6s have been killing them. Which is why often when opponents attacking you, and they have checkers stacked like they do, like White does on the 18. You have the bar, especially if there's more than two. Um, it's very hard to bring things home. As you'll notice, all those checkers on the 18 point, they did two different rolls to get themselves out. 
you know, they need to kind of step up and then get around. Uh, that's a lot of moves. So that's one key to when you have a take at times, but they still have all that work to do to free their checkers, even if you're preoccupied and stuck in the bar is white. Here they go. Double five. Should be an awesome roll, but it's not quite as awesome when you're stuck with that back checker there. And it looks like this will just make the three point heavy. Come in with two. And six four. Well, now six four plays. I do four. No, I do the other six. Yeah, slightly different. No. No, I would have been up with the four and down with the six. Put an extra spare on the on the seven point there. Ooh, nice roll. Up with one and then make the five with three. So now very hard here for white to hit loose. I mean, they're going to have to. Because they're down in the race. So it gets quite dangerous. 2-1. They didn't have a spare. So make a little 4 prime there. They could hit loose if they would have played that other way. That just looks way too loose. That is an option. Right there. Yeah. Go with the 4 prime. Makes sense. They don't roll a 4. Which happens a bunch. Happens 44% of the time. They did get over a four, which happens the other 56% of the time. And they stay back with that three, not to leave any direct shots. Looking for eights. They do not get an eight. They can make the two point here. They kind of want to insta board. Normally you can kind of slot two points to make them faster, but they're looking for contact now. Not in a little bit. They're looking to hit a shot immediately. So they do not want the they don't want the checkers on their board. The blots on their board. Three two will make the ace. Yeah. Nice little play. Get to stay back. Still looking for an eight. Three two's not there, but makes the five. Ooh, that board is looking nice. It's looking nice now. Yeah, white's looking a lot better. Eight. Eight is no good. Oh, you're going to put that back. That's not going to move. Yep. Just clear it. Make that six-point board. Play with one block floating around the outfield. Yep. Then it points it out to less. Saying, okay, we're not going to run. We're going to make our six-point board. Make it look really scary. Safety the block. And try to hit an eight if you can. Karen's like, I've tried twice already to hit an eight. And I still didn't hit an eight. Gonna run with those? No, she's like, I'll run with one. They can hit me with an eight. Since there's no cover, I suppose that may be right. You can bring both in. And then eights will not hit. You know, eights happen a lot. There's six eights. So this way, double four is blocked, double two is blocked. You know, five three gives you a direct shot instead of getting hit and losing the game. So I, I agree with this play. Okay, tension mounts again. Looking for an eight. It's that four three. No good. And Karen's on the Buster board first. Less looking for over an eight. We get. Oh, he gets a nine. Yeah, nine comes all the way in. Where you go now? Karen's running six three steps up. And the race is on. Do, do, do. The race is on. Okay, looking for big numbers. There's a nine. Comes in perfectly efficiently. Desperately seeking boxes here. I would love to rip three checkers this roll. Wouldn't we all? Five, two doesn't do it. Nice, cute play like that but the reason you can do plays like that for the ones that don't know is she only needs to rip one checker now or three and this way she'll 
still do that and have our positions better. Checker G rip one. Now she'll rip three checkers with all of her doubles except double fours. Wow. So this is not looking good here. Looks like this game is going to be ending early for us. Maybe next time we can talk longer. It's been a wonderful day in the neighborhood. And that's it. Congratulations, not unless. Kind of calling this, it's still possible. You know, we kind of have to make those calls and then look silly when another person comes back. 3 1. We'll rip one checker. In need of two doubles here. Karen needs to start with the big one right now. 6 5 is not enough. Congratulations. Um, I hope you enjoyed all this. Uh, come back. We should have more uh, coming up. You know, traveling to lots of tournaments is tough, but always doing great stuff in sunny Florida. Go out, play some back in there, and come back and check things out. Enjoy.